All right, so let's talk a little bit about disc uh, discrimination and legal remedies, all right? So, let's say, for example, because have you ever been filling out a job application, and on that job application, it asked, have you been convicted, keyword, convicted, of a crime within the matter of the last seven years? Now, if you have gone to continue and further your education to work in a specific field, all right? So you have, for example, accrued debts to go ahead and, you know, obtain a, obtain a diploma. Now, when it comes to the legal circumstances that end up popping up on your background check, you have done everything that had been required of you by the courts to go ahead and remedy such legal matters. Like, for example, if you were ordered to do community service and you did all your hours of community service, or you were required to go ahead and be on probation and you, you know, adhered to your requirements of probation. Which, keep in mind, there are two different types of probation. Supervised probation and unsupervised probation. Unsupervised probation has different requirements than supervised probation. Supervised probation requires you to go ahead and check in with your probation officer, go ahead and meet any, pro uh, any meetings that are required by your probation officer to actually go ahead and meet. They may, may or may not understand. So it is not 100% guaranteed across the board they may or may not require you to go ahead and undergo drug screenings at every probation, you know, meetup, or it could be every once in a while under the suspicion of, you know, utilizing illegal, uh, legal or illicit substances. But as long as you go ahead and you meet the requirements of your probation. If you have done so and you apply to, you know, a, an employer and they clarify to you that the reason that they are not willing to hire you, despite the factor that before they were considering hiring you, was because of a background check and something that popped up on your background check. It absolutely is considered discrimination to have that be the reason to end the application process if they violate two stipulations. Number one, it is illegal for them to go ahead and hold against you a prior arrest, all right, that dates back further than seven years, all right? So understand, if you, for example, went to jail a decade ago, all right? And within that decade, you have not been arrested and had to go ahead and again go to jail with new charges, that employer absolutely can go ahead and be sued civilly for what's called tortious interference. All right. Tortious interference. Ultimately, it is somebody attempting to intentionally hinder your capacity to be able to sustain a humane condition and standard of living. All right. So trying to block your capability of employment to go ahead and let's say, for example, leave you perpetually homeless. That is absolutely illegal. And at that point, you can go ahead and sue the person that is blocking your ability to be able to sustain livable conditions and humane conditions. All right. And the second is 
were you arrested or were you convicted? Now understand, when you are arrested, it means that you were brought to the station, you were, you know, after being detained, you were booked, you know, uh, ultimately your, you know, biometrics were put in the system, you know, you were held in that jail. But ultimately, you did not end up going ahead and getting sent to prison because of the factor that ultimately your arrest was conditioned on the suspicion of you breaking the law. You being sent to prison ends up being a result of being convicted of what you were accused of. And in order to be convicted, hearsay and speculation does not amount to the burden of proof to be able to pass the reasonable, you know, the, uh, It's called the uh, presumption of innocence. To move past the point of the presumption of innocence, to move to the presumption of guilt. Now, understand. Ultimately, if you were granted a time served and no contest, that does not amount to a conviction. That amounts to an arrest with a continued investigation. If you did not get sent to prison because of the factor that you were presumed and assumed guilty with full evidence, all right? And we are talking enough evidence to be able to remove the reasonable doubt of any potential mistakes in said proceedings. That is the difference between conviction and arrested. Conviction means you did it. It was proven that you did it. There was evidence that you did it. It wasn't just something, you know, speculation and hearsay or somebody else's word of mouth. It wasn't gossip. You know, it wasn't the rumor mill. There was actual substantiated evidence that reasonably eliminates anyone else from being suspected of being the potential perpetrator. So, that being said, if you do not get the opportunity to continue the application process, because you were arrested over seven years ago. You were discriminated against and you absolutely can civilly go ahead and sue that company or organization that you had applied for, for discrimination. All right. On the grounds of tortious interference.